Good morning. Welcome to the Healing Minute. My name's Gary. And the picture that you can see is one of the windows at the, the Sanctuary Chapel. And the hands of healing encompass the world. And the music that you can hear is from Margaret Coates' CD, Animal Angels. It's music composed by Stuart Jones. I'm going to take you on a little meditation. I'm just going to wait for some more people to log on. Looking slightly brighter than yesterday, which is a good thing. If you put your feet flat on the ground and take a deep breath, see yourself on holiday in the country, leaving your house for a walk. And as you stroll down the lane, ahead of you are woods. Walk through the woods, feeling the lovely shade given by the trees. And as you carry on your walk, you leave the woods and you're in a pretty little village. You can hear the sound of church. <laughs> And as you stroll through the village, you can see at the end a very old church with loud ringing bells. Go into the church. There is no service. The sound of bells is so beautiful. You sit and relax for a while. When you get up, you leave the church and carry on your walk. There's another sound the sound of children laughing and playing. There's a little school in this village, and as you reach the school, a bell sounds, and the children file away back into the school. It's time for you to go back home, walk past the old church, through the village, and back into the lovely shaded woods. Walk out into the lane, breathing in the peace and the serenity. Now open your eyes. But remember that quiet little village and revisit it any time you want. Now we start the healing minute. We give thanks. We are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. I'm just going to read the Sanctuary Prayer. I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with a divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, so that they might too experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you. Amen. And the Harry Edwards prayer. May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness, 
protects me from all ills, and grants me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection, and bring your healing ministers close to me, so that I may be conscious of their presence, and so receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious, let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers one to the other and that peace shall endure for all time. Amen. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for the highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for the highest good. Please join me now in a minute's silence and we can send healing to all of our friends who need healing at this time and of course not to forget the animal kingdom. Our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. Amen. I'd like to read you a story now. It's a story which very unusually is about McDonald's, the fast food giant. And more specifically, Ronald McDonald the Clown. This story is from an American book where McDonald's is a part of the community, which might experience, which might uh, explain away the um, fact that so many Americans suffer from obesity. Anyway, a number of years ago, 1983 to 87, I had the opportunity to play the character of Ronald McDonald for the McDonald's Corporation. My marketplace covered most of Arizona and a portion of Southern California. One of our standard events was Ronald Day. One day each month, we visited as many of the community hospitals as possible, bringing a little happiness into a place where no one ever looked forward to going. I was very proud to be able to make a difference for children and adults who were experiencing some downtime. The warmth and gratification I would receive stayed with me for weeks. I love the project. McDonald's love the project, the kids and adults love it, and so did the nursing and hospital staffs. There were two restrictions placed on me during a visit. First, I could not go anywhere in the hospital without McDonald's personnel, my handlers, as well as hospital personnel. That way, if I were to walk into a room and frighten a the child, there was someone there to address the issue immediately. And second, I couldn't physically touch anyone within the hospital. They didn't want me transferring my germs from one patient to another. I understood why they had this don't touch rule, but I didn't like it, because I've always thought that touching is the most honest form of communication we will ever know. Breaking either of these rules, I was told, 
means I can lose my job. Towards the end of my fourth year of Ronald Days, as I was heading down a hallway after a long day in grease paint and on my way home, I heard a little voice calling Ronald. The soft little voice was coming through a half-open door. I pushed the door open and saw a young boy about five years old lying in his dad's arms, hooked up to more medical equipment than I've ever seen. Mum was on the other side along with Grandma, Grandpa and a nurse tending to the equipment. I knew by the feeling in the room that the situation was grave. I asked the little boy his name. He told me it was Billy. And I did a few simple magic tricks for him and as I stepped back to say goodbye, I asked Billy if there was anything else I could do. And he said, Ronald, would you hold me? It's such a simple request. But when, what ran through my mind was that if I touched him, I'd lose my job. So I told Billy I couldn't do that right now, but I suggested that he and I colour a picture. <laughs> Upon completing the picture, Billy again asked me to hold him. By this time, my heart was screaming yes, but my mind was screaming louder, no, you're going to lose your job. Hold me. It was such a simple request, and yet it's just that if I lost my job, it'd probably not be long before I'd lose my car, then my home, and to be honest with you, I really like those things. But I realised that at the end of my life the car would have no value, and neither would the house. The only things that have steadfast value were experiences. So I realised that I really faced no risk at all. I sent Mum, Dad and Grandpa and Grandma out of the room and my two McDonald's escorts out to the van. The nurse tending the equipment stayed, but Billy asked her to stand and face the corner. Then I picked up this little wonder of a human being. He was so frail and so scared. We laughed and cried for 45 minutes and talked about the things that worried him. Billy was afraid that his little brother might get lost coming home from kindergarten next year without Billy to show him the way. He worried that his dog wouldn't get another bone because Billy had hidden the bones in the house before going back to the hospital and now he couldn't remember where he put them. There'd be problems to a little boy who knows he's not going home. On my way out of the room, with tear streaked makeup running down my neck, I gave mum and dad my real name and phone number. Another automatic dismissal for a, a Ronald McDonald, but I thought, I was gone anyway and I had nothing to lose. So I said if there's anything I can do, or the McDonald's Corporation could do, give me a call and consider it done. Less than 48 hours later, I received a phone call from Billy's mum. She informed me that Billy had passed away. She and her husband simply wanted to thank me for making a difference in the little boy's life. Billy's mum told me that shortly after I left the room, Billy looked at her and said, Mum, I don't care anymore if I don't see Santa this year because I was held by Ronald McDonald. Sometimes we must do what's right for the moment, regardless of the perceived risk. Our experiences have value and the one biggest reason people limit their experiences is because of the risk involved. For the records, McDonald's did find out about Billy and me, but given the circumstances permitted me to retain my job. And that story is by Jeff McMullen. It's quite a wonderful story, isn't it? Now, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And this afternoon, we have a service. It's on Zoom. It's from the Sanctuary Chapel. And it's in memory of Tony Chode. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.